find that these prayers were designed to invoke spiritual, healing, and powerful forces of the conscious universe. What I mean by that is that this, uh, the, 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 during the night time, the, the uh, night priesthood, including the female, they come and also, they, I'm talking about uh, the, the priesthood of the universe, they only come and show themselves instantaneously, is what they do. start talking, uh, giving a prayer to those people that are in the, in the upper world, it starts out with what they, the Zunis refer to as the rock roof, and they're referred to as priests or gods. The rock roof, then the next one is uh, the, the moon and the, the sun, the, uh, the big deeper, and as it goes up, about the seven. The seven took me a long time to figure out that was referring to Pleiades. Pleiades having that seven star loop or whatever it is. And then above that is the, the supernova. The supernova group. And, and depending on the specific functions of the medicine order society, then again it expands into other star systems and also certain uh, parts of the, I mean, certain stars in the, uh, stars or planets in the universe, depending on what their specific uh, order is or their, or their medicine group is. And those, and those are kept pretty well secret among, among those societies. In Zuni, even though the medicine orders are the same, that the species, specific groups have their own references, and sometimes we don't know what the other society references are. And but, so that's, uh, but in, in the case of, of Pleiades, uh, it's very specific. That's incredible. So you're saying the elders could talk to gods or goddesses from different star systems? Yes.
was considered by most ancient religions as the most sacred sound of the universe. It is a sound that cannot be heard by the human ear, because the human ear only hears between 20 and 20,000 hertz. The sound of the sun is much lower in frequency and also much higher in frequency than we can hear. Could the sound of the sun be part of the universal language system? NASA has recorded the actual sound of the sun in deep space and compressed the inaudible waves so that human ears can hear it. If we listen to the sound, we can hear and feel a deep vibration. The sound of the sun recorded by NASA is precisely as the ancient Hindus had described it in the Vedas thousands of years ago. It is a mantra that can be intoned with human speech as Sixth century BC, Pythagoras also heard the sound of the sun and described it as a deep resonant hum with higher frequencies blended into it. How did the ancient Hindus know this mantra if it could not be heard by the human ear? Could they have actually peered into the universal consciousness and perceived it? As human language and the language of nature cannot travel faster than the speed of sound as a sound wave. Language as information can travel at the speed of light and beyond by entangling itself on more subtle energies. In the same way that we can send human voices or music on radio waves at the speed of light, we can send our own dialogue, personal energy signature, and information through our own biophoton light emissions at the speed of light. While the speed of light is useful to communicate within the solar system, it cannot take us far beyond it in any reasonable amount of time. In this way, biophoton emissions are limited, while more subtle bioenergies are not. Dr. Taylor's discovery of the psychic force as subtle energies emanating from the human body of consciousness demonstrates how our personal information can travel on subtle energy frequencies at the speed of light squared, cubed, and beyond. Okay, in my modeling, which I developed uh, from a deep meditative state uh, in the ni early 1970s, uh, the model that eventually appeared to me, which I wrote down in my first psychoenergetic book, which I didn't publish for about 30 years. Uh, that was in 1997. And that was Science and Human Transformation. Subtle Energies, Intentionality, and Consciousness. So, in that, I draw a Minkowski diagram with uh, the standard cone kind of thing, but there are several cones where the events occur inside the normal light cone, of Minkowski is the coordinates of distance and time. Uh, the limitation of the walls on the cone is velocity of light, C. Uh, the next one, the limits, which is which is the uh, magnetic information wave domain, is C squared. The next one, which is the emotion domain, is C cubed. And the next one, the mind domain, C to the fourth. And beyond that, zero. So, again, until you can make measurements, uh, we will not be able to check these kinds of things. But they're internally self-consistent with a variety of stuff. And they, they give us a lot of hope and optimism that if we will ever get out of this box that Orthodox science is stuck in, then they will have a marvelous, marvelous adventure uh, in learning more about nature. Is the power of meditation so profound? that we can expand our consciousness into the...
cosmos and perceive the actual sound of the sun and the universe. And one of the fascinating things about psychic phenomena is that they seem to, to travel much faster than light. And there's evidence to back that up. And there are actually now several experiments. And the first one that I learned about was by a Russian scientist named Polshivian, uh, probably back in the early in the 60s, I believe. He was working with acupuncture and measuring the voltages on the acupoints on the acupuncture, as you know, or you know, certain points on the body that uh, the Chinese medicine stipulates have certain electrical properties. What, as Polshivian was measuring the voltages, he saw a curious spike in them and wondered what the cause the spike was. Later he learned there had been a solar flare uh, at the moment that he saw this voltage spike. What was strange is that the spike occurred 8.3 minutes before you would be able to see that solar flare because light travels you know, at a limited speed. It takes 8.3 minutes for light to get from the sun to the earth. But his spikes showed up instantaneously. This is the first evidence that there's something that travels much faster than light that affects the body and affects the acupuncture system, and we can measure physically. Since then, the Russians have done a lot of work on what they call torsion, which is their version of the same psychic force. And uh, they do find there's an element of that that does travel much faster than light, so that uh, now even telescopes have been devised which can measure this energy they show that that signal does travel faster than light. So this is again, you know, another revolutionary aspect of physics that you know, most Western scientists are just ignoring, but it's really important. Our bodies are made of about 90 plus percent water, which is hydrogen, oxygen, and we're also made of minerals and carbon. The sun is made of over 90 percent hydrogen, trace oxygen, and trace minerals and helium. It's it's made of almost the same stuff we are. So inversely, if the sun can send us telepathic messages faster than the speed of light, we can send the sun telepathic messages faster than the speed of light. And what that means is, um, every 11 years, according to NASA, we come into solar maximums where solar flares are a potential threat to our planet. If we can learn to pray and talk to the sun as a living being, not as a god, not as the god of creation, but if we can talk to the sun as a living being, can we collectively, with billions of minds together, ask the sun to calm itself, to harmonize itself with us, and not to harm us? Can we do that? Are our collective minds that powerful? If we consider Dr. Tiller's model once again, realizing that consciousness is operating in a domain beyond the gamma ray spectrum, Consciousness has the power to create a universe. Considering a short 10 second gamma ray burst from a supernova will release more energy than our sun will in its entire multi billion year lifetime. Consciousness in the magneto electric spectrum and beyond is even more powerful than that. If we could access this through coherent awareness, we could become like gods and goddesses. To me, we are all spirits having a physical experience as we ride the river of life together. Our spiritual parents dressed us in these bio body suits put us in this playpen that we call a universe in order to grow in coherence, in order to develop our gifts of intentionality, and in order to become what we were intended to become, co-creators with our spiritual parents. And co-creator means to eventually evolve into the place where you could interact with planets and you could co-create planets or stars. So it's, it's in the game as far as I see it. We are not anywhere near um, the end of physics, the theory of everything. We are just babes crawling across the floor of the universe. We've hardly begun the great adventure. 
then all these things are possible. We manipulate this universe. That's why it's here for us. It's our classroom. No other way to become co-creators on this magnificent scale. But that's in our future from this planet's level of activity. We have to move and become coherent at the deeper levels of nature. Using Einstein's equation of converting frequencies into mass energy, the higher the frequency, the higher the energy. Any frequency into the gamma ray spectrum, the magnetoelectric spectrum and beyond, coupled with matter, has the power to create anything we can imagine, including the solar system, the galaxy, and the universe. The coherence at this level of nature is very good. I mean, we can make we can make lasers. We can convert the potential of a light bulb from 50 watts to uh, create temperatures 10 times the surface of the sun. And you can make all those photons, electromagnetic photons, coherent. But the dimensionality of the higher dimensions, just as this one. Okay, if you look at the most coherent aspect for electromagnetic laser is the wavelength of the light you're dealing with. So but now if you go to the next level the, of the vacuum, magnetic information wave level, you've changed the size scale by 10 orders of magnitude. And then to the next level, another 10 orders of magnitude. And the next level, another 10 orders of magnitude. And so to be coherent at those inner levels, really coherent, the energy densities are beyond your imagining. So it isn't just that it goes C, C squared, C cubed, C to the fourth. The size scale goes down and down and down. The wavelength goes up and up and up. And the power, ultimately, is huge. So in principle, all of the things I've talked about appear to be possible. It is information at this level of reality that tells matter what to do. Consciousness at the magneto-electric spectrum and beyond can also power a spacecraft at the speed of light squared and beyond. Does this give us a new understanding and a new vision of God? When you make the two into one, you will become children of Adam, and when you say mountain, move from here, it will move. Jesus, the Gospel of Thomas. By tapping into just a small amount of this consciousness, certainly we can change the weather, and we can talk to the sun to ask it to do anything. Imagine for a moment if, um, if a hurricane was coming in the future, but now, as people, instead of what we're doing with the weather forecasts, which we're, is we're amplifying the fear and we're looking at all the blowing of the winds and all the torment and so on. Imagine instead we had millions or billions of people simultaneously engaged in an organized, synchronized, uh, guided imagery over the media of sending loving intentions and calming intentions to a storm. Or even with redirecting it to a safer environment. Would we find that the storm was diminished? Would we find that the storm might be moved? But we'll never discover it unless we look for it. If we don't ask the questions, if we don't try it, we'll never know whether it matters or not. The key to talking to nature is to know its harmonic language. When we examine this photo of ordinary water, flash frozen, while it was exposed to the sound of the sun, we can see it transforms from its ordinary state of disorder into the most perfect sacred geometry. Is there a purpose to the sun's sound waves broadcasting throughout the solar system? Is it a sort of language? Does the sound of the sun bring order to the nine planets? Pythagoras discovered that all of the planets were producing a sort of cosmic music he called the music of the spheres. When NASA recorded the sounds of Saturn, researchers were in awe. 